You know Tracy Plough. She has headed the Department of Mental Health and now Addiction Services since the merger. But one thing that really has struck me about Tracy is how hands-on she is. I mean, I send emails and I get a response from her directly all the time. She co-chairs personally one of the subcommittees of this task force, the Mental Health uh, Courts Subcommittee. She's just totally committed and totally involved, and she has embraced the Stepping Up program in a big, big way, even to joining the National uh, uh, Council for State Governments Committee. And so she is going to share with us some of the things that they're doing in terms of technical support, the website, lots of opportunities. But I want to tell you, her, without her at my side, our side, doing all of this, so much of what we would be able to accomplish would not happen because she has the resources, the staff, she has the ear of the governor, she has the projects, she has funds, she has so many things that she can use to change the paradigm and I have become such a big fan of hers and I'm so grateful for her support. Thank you. Thank you. Given that introduction, it seems like, you know, there's an expectation I'm handing out $100,000 checks at the end of this presentation. That is not the case. I apologize. But what I wanted to do this morning is uh, just provide sort of an overview of where we are at this point. My coworker, Julie Spohn, is here, and she is um, going to be sharing uh, part of this presentation time to talk a little bit about technical assistance that is uh, uh, being stood up currently. So what I wanted to do basically is talk about where we are, um, some of the specific resources that could be considered, and then again, turn it over to Julie. Um, at most recent accounting, the green highlighted counties are those that actually have county commission or passed resolutions embracing the stepping up concept. Obviously, there are discussions underway in other communities about joining the effort. If you see a county here that should be represented and is not, let us know. Um, but this is the most recent uh, uh, version that we have. Uh, so this represents, by the way, 57% um, of Ohio's population, which I think is fantastic. And um, you know, we will continue to try to build this out. And I know that uh, Eve and Tom are, are on the road a lot. So um, you know, this, this will continue to turn more green as we go forward. We don't have a specific stepping up subsidy uh, at this point. Um, for uh, an incentive to join. But there are some resources that are currently available that could be leveraged, in some cases are being leveraged, to support this overall theme. And so what I wanted to do this morning is just share some of the actual um, resources that our department is involved in providing and then offer some examples of things that you could consider as you're exploring other kinds of concepts within other agencies. Um, we have a program called Community Innovations, and uh, back probably four years ago now, we met with a group of sheriffs and some treatment providers and Adam boards in northwestern Ohio, and um, folks talked about the, the capacity challenges, basically, as it relates to serving people with mental illness and people with addiction in uh, rural areas if someone is, is sent to jail due to... Um, uh, you know, some sort of offense. And the challenge was, you know, treatment in the, in the actual facility, but also 
when they are released, there's nowhere to go. They may be uh, being released to homelessness, and then they reoffend, and they're back in jail three days later, which is a problem not only for that person, but for the taxpayers who are um, footing the bill for the jail stay, and then you know no outcomes are, are being improved. Plus, it creates a very difficult environment at the jail and, and within the um, criminal justice system. So we ultimately, when we consolidated um, the Department of Mental Health and, and the Department of um, Alcohol and Drug Addiction Services back in 2013, we realized an administrative savings about, of about $1.5 million. And we made the case to the governor and the General Assembly that we could invest these savings in partnerships with the Adam Boards and uh, uh, county jails around the state. Not enough to solve all problems, certainly, but it's enough to you know, help um, move a little bit of, of things forward. Since that point, we're now at $3 million per year with a subsidy program, and uh, this is a community-led um, uh, proposal. So if a community wants to focus on diversion, if they want to focus on treatment at the jail, or if they want to focus on you know, helping offenders connect with services in the community, any or all of those is fine. We just want them to have outcomes. You know, we think we're going to serve this many people. We think we're going to um, reduce recidivism by X percent, you know, whatever seems to be most appropriate for that uh, community. So you can see in this fiscal year and last fiscal year, uh, we had 23 funded projects um, that um, actually spanned, I think, 34 or 38 counties. So you can see these in a lighter shade of green. You'll notice that some of these overlap with the stepping up counties, but some of them don't. And so, you know, we see this as an opportunity for those counties that are receiving state dollars but haven't considered stepping up to consider stepping up because of the technical assistance associated there and vice versa. I want to keep this program funded for the next biennium, and I would love to see it expanded. We're in the you know, budget development process now, so not exactly sure, you know, what that outcome is going to be, but I think this is really important. I was uh, traveling to a rural area of Ohio just last week, and um, the, the folks in, um, who are administering this program at their county jail said that they've served more than 500 individuals as a result of the, the grant that was received by that community. So, you know, that's 500 people who may not have gotten services previously. It is not you know, enough to meet all demand, but I think that it's certainly a step in the right direction. And from an advocacy perspective, if you are a recipient of these funds or if you're interested in receiving funds in the future and you're not today, you know, consider uh, talking with um, decision makers as we move into the budget process because I think that this is, this is something that, um, you know, again, can help progress a community a couple of steps forward. Um, we also have a, a specialized dockets payroll subsidy. Thinking about diversion, there have been a, a significant expansion of certified drug courts, mental health courts, veterans courts, et cetera, in Ohio since the Supreme Court made the certification available about a year and a half ago now, I think. And um, we offer a payroll subsidy to certified dockets on a first-come, first-served basis. The um, thrust of this has been drug courts, but we recognize that individuals who have co-occurring disorders are, you know, served in many different specialty dockets, and so um, we've been uh, reasonably flexible with, you know, if you're a certified docket, um, you know, you can ap apply for these resources. So that's something to consider in the future. Um, all the funds are expended this year, but, you know, there's, there's been a lot of interest in this and maybe one way to help defray some local costs thinking about a diversion opportunity. Um, I am not here to really sell these specific examples from other state departments, but I just wanted to highlight that there may be resources that are actually obligated within a county that not all partners are aware of. Department of Rehab and Corrections has two different kinds of um, community-based grants through the courts to help serve folks in, in a less restrictive setting. And um, we visited a community about a year ago, and the treatment providers and the Adam Board were unaware that they, the court system actually had a diversion grant that could be brought to bear for the purposes of individuals with behavioral health needs. And so, again, these are not available in all communities. You know, I don't know what the future application process or future availability is, but I think it bears um, a mention to be talking with local partners to see if there are things out there that you, from your perspective, may be unaware of, whether it's law enforcement talking with the treatment community or vice versa. I think, you know, this is an example of something that 
um, could be examined. And then also um, within the Department of Public Safety, the um, Office of Criminal Justice Services, I know Lisa's here or, yeah, there you are. Um, you know, this, this is just an example of some resource that comes out on a relatively regular basis, and it's not specifically for the purpose that stepping up it, it relates to, but if there's some element of some sort of community funding that might be brought to bear to assist in some way, shape, or form, it's worth participating in those discussions locally as, you know, proposals are being developed. So I just, you know, make mention of these as really examples rather than, you know, um, you know, these are concrete opportunities at this juncture. Um, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Julie. She was hired um, specifically earlier this year to help coordinate uh, some of our criminal justice efforts within the department. And stepping up is within her purview, as are the um, uh, addiction treatment program uh, um, uh, projects that are, are being funded through certain uh, uh, certified drug courts around the state, and she has been um, having a lot of engagement with stepping up counties on technical assistance, and she's going to talk about some next steps here. Um, so one thing that we did um, is had a stepping up summit for counties that um, have signed a resolution um, for stepping up. Um, one thing we did at the summit was um, broke out into team groups and um, had each county identify what their priorities are um, and what areas of technical assistance that they need. So um, I gathered all of those documents and was able to see exactly what it is that um, what each county is looking at doing and where their technical assistant needs lie so that we could um, see what is the most popular thing that was needed and, and see where we could help serve the most amount of people. Um, so I've got on, gotten all of that um, together um, and we're looking at ways that we can provide th that technical assistance to the counties that are involved. Um, another thing that I've done is um, compiled a lot of resources, um, webinars and things like that on our Stepping Up website, which Um, which I will show you shortly. Um, let's see, I can go ahead and do that first. The next one, yeah. I think there's a slideshow up there. Oh, okay. I can pull it up so that everybody can see. Um, so if you go to, you can go to maj.ohio.gov slash stepping up or go to our website and um, go to treatment and go to criminal justice involvement and click on stepping up um, and get to our page. Um, but one of the main things I wanted to show you was that um, I added publication tools and resources section, um, which has different areas um, that, that counties can look up and um, access resources and webinars. Um, another p important piece on there is that all of the participating counties are listed down here. Um, and you can either click on the map or click on the tabs below um, and see um, resources and things that counties have submitted to me. Um, so if you wanted to see, for instance, what Delaware County is doing, you can see who their lead contact is, um, see some of the um, resources that they provided to me. Um, another important piece on the website um, is the um, stepping up together um, meeting that we had that I just spoke about when people um, broke out into their own sessions. Um, all the presentations um, and the handouts that were given at that meeting are here as well. So if someone wasn't able to participate or hadn't signed a resolution, you can see what um, occurred at that meeting. Um, but those are just some of the things that we're working on right now. Um, one of the major things that was identified um, as a technical assistance request was um, d ways to share data. So we've been, you know, gathering with our steering committee and, and looking at ways that we can um, help provide some technical assistance in that area and other popular areas um, that were requested. Um, and then another um, area that we're working on is that Melissa Knapp is um, working on um, distributing an assessment to all of the stepping up counties, um, which would gather information about um, where th the counties are and um, what data they're collecting, um, things like that, and then that way we can use that information to um, move forward and see what counties really need. And there's a picture of the site that I just showed. 
Um, and then there's also the um, national website um, where you can access, they have a toolkit on there, and I have a link to that on, on our website as well. Um, but there's a lot of other resources, and you can see um, what other states and state counties that are involved in stepping up as well. Are there any quick questions for Julie or myself? Excellent. Thank you so much for the time.